previously on Verity. That four-story office building, the Randell Business Park, there is someone else being loaded up onto a gurney. You see that Maureen kind of scuttles off. She presses the button to the elevator, and you hear this loud bang and thud from the hallway. As you rush out, you see that between those tight elevator doors, there's smoke coming from within the elevator shaft. You feel this shock hit your hand as you're holding your phone. You see these sparks come out of the bottom of your phone, and then something jumps into your computer. Jonas, that's your name, isn't it? Hmm, there sure is a lot, lot to learn in this funny little box. You gotta go get somebody, you gotta go get help. There are a handful of doctors in here trying to make sure that Lewis can stabilize. Are you two close? We're not typically close, but I mean, I, we just kind of spent the day together on accident, it would seem. And you hear this laughter. The night passes. Lewis, you get some much needed rest. Jonas, you, I imagine, have a restless night at home. And you both wake up. Lewis, you see a doctor comes in and they check on you and they ask you, you know, how you're feeling. Still pretty groggy, but that could just be the meds talking. Uh, still aching everywhere, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was. I, my awareness is coming back, so I guess that's a start. The doctor nods. Progress is progress. And she smiles. You see that she writes something down on her sheets and she fills up your IV bag. And she walks out and you see that Kelly pokes her head in the room. Kelly, are you okay after all of that? I Yeah, I was kind of worried that you were gone. I know you jumped in there to take that bullet for me, so I, I just wanted to thank you. I never formally did, so. You don't have to thank me. Did you ever figure out what's going on with your generator? Uh, I mean, I went to go return it to Huey, and he said he's going to look at it today, because obviously, you know, shop got all weird last night. Weird's an understatement. When I get out of here, this might sound a little forward, but would you maybe perchance like to go on a date sometime? She's standing there with her mouth open. Yes, that 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 would that would be lovely, I think. Wonderful. Um, and I will give her my phone number. I should be out in I think five days. Just shoot me a text, call, whatever you prefer, and we can figure something out. Alrighty, Lewis. And she smiles. She takes the number from you, and she starts to walk towards the door. And she looks back and she says, "Thanks again. What you did was, I, I really appreciate it." It's a dangerous world out there. People don't have each other. Don't know what we do. She smiles, and then she waves and walks out of the room. He has this sort of kind of newfound confidence, like, damn, I'm doing good the past couple days. Like, I'm on a roll. Smoothing things over a boulette, going on a date with Kelly, let's go. So, Jonas. Wait a minute, that's me. It is. Jonas is gonna, obviously, first things first, grab some uh, funny little foodies from the crossroads and then take it down to the viaduct for Riley. On the way out of the viaduct, Jonas will take the dead body and start dragging it to the same place that Riley and Jonas disposed of Pastor Cohen. Just dump it in the swamp? You had a corpse swamp now. I mean, where do you keep your bodies? I legally cannot say. Good man. Smart man. And then Jonas will leave. As you're leaving the viaduct, you hear that voice echo in your head. All magic comes with a price. It's time to pay the price. I'm sorry, what was that trip then from yesterday? Was that not the price? Was you torturing me not enough? <laughs> this is not your price to pay. What are you talking about? I saved him from the brink of death. Jonas will say no more to the necklace, and they will head to the hospital. I'm assuming you go to room 4C? Yeah. And my roll's about to end. <laughs> Man, these past few days have been great. Jonas walks in the room. Ah, oh, fuck. What's this? What's this? It's Jonas Redding with a steel chair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jonas, you make your way to Lewis's hospital room, and the door at the moment is slightly ajar. Jonas walks into the room, shuts the door behind them, and just kind of leans up against the, the wall and thinks in their head, now what? 
Show him what you saw. From Lewis's perspective, what's happened thus far is Jonas has walked in, shut the door, leaned against the wall, and said nothing. And then you hear them chuckle. <laughs> With pleasure. And Jonas wordlessly approaches Lewis's hospital bed. What are you doing, Jonas? Shut up. But Jonas is going to grab Lewis by the sides of the head, and they're going to start beaming their memories from what they saw at the Crossroads Diner directly into Lewis's head. Lewis, Jonas grabs your head. You feel his fingers just heat up on the sides of your head as you see like this TV static for a second, and then your perspective changes to the diner, and you see the sight that actually unfolded that night. You see that there are families cowering in this place and you and Billy run in beaten and bruised and scratched and bloody and you see that this monstrous looking person is just tearing through all of these EMTs and cops and these people are screaming they're terrified and suddenly you and Billy just take off and in the back of your own head you hear a voice that says you know this to be true scream what who, what are you what what and you see tv static and your vision reverts and you see jonas standing in front of you jonas what the hell was that your price to be paid something told me i know this to be true did that it was probably your conscience i mean if i was involved in that then certainly my conscience would be riddled with grief but is that what you've been saying happened that's what happened mr green now jonas I know you've been thinking I've been bullshitting you all this time. I genuinely had no recollection of that till this moment. Mm-hmm. Well, that's all I came here to do. Uh, but I suppose I should leave you with these parting words. Go on. Fuck you! <laughs> scared the crap out of me. I actually jumped. <laughs> I need a moment. Hold on. Okay, what was I gonna fucking say? Shit. Okay. Well, that's all I came here to do, but I suppose I should leave you with these parting words. You haven't earned a hero's death, Mr. Green. You don't get to go out a martyr. Not until you've rectified that. On the grave of my mother and father, I will do everything in my power to make some semblance of right. Jonas has been standing there with their arms crossed, and they just kind of let out a sigh, and drop their arms, and then walk out of the room. You see, on the other side of the door, Amber, and she looks terrible. Oh, well, you look fetching. She glares at you, and she says, Good, you're both here. I was just leaving, actually. Oh, no, you're not. Took me a moment to find you guys. And she closes the door behind her, and she says, Someone please fill me in, because last night was a train wreck. What's the deal? What happened to you last night? I had to deal with this on my own. It would it would have been nice to have help, but it seems like we couldn't get everyone together last night. So I think now is the time that we reconvene, figure out what's going on, and we actually work together as a unit. So what happened last night? Obviously, the usual. Lewis is in a hospital bed. Is the thing dead? Or what's going on? Not exactly. Whatever it was that was trying to eat the substation uh it got suppressed but i guess it's still out there somewhere weakened though do you know where it went no clue well i might i might have a lead i was behind stillwater trying to fight this thing maybe if we start looking back there we'll find something i don't know so what did you figure out it could do amber if anything well last night as i expressed to you know what we're missing somebody. Where is Billy? Yeah, don't get me started on him. He he had a date and therefore didn't go get Jonas, so I had to. Are you serious? Yep, a thousand percent serious. He was aware that a monster was ransacking the town, and he didn't come to help people because he had a date. Jonas at this point is just kind of seething, and they walk over into a corner and take a seat. Well, I guess all I have is you two now. I guess I'll have to find Billy later. I told him that I found a vengeful spirit. Obviously, fighting ghosts on your own is not great, especially when they want you dead. So, 
that's my knight. Uh, the only powers that I know it has is it can just disappear, it can reappear, and it can just do horrible things to you. But that's all that I've seen. You said a vengeful spirit that appeared and, and disappeared? What, like in front of you? Like materialized and had like a form? Yeah, it, it manifested and it disappeared and it was some guy. Yeah, no, we were dealing with some being that could inhabit technology and mechanical things. The MOs don't really match. I mean, what we were fighting was jumping through power lines and breaking our phones and various other electronics. They don't sound the same. But maybe a, a djinn was a blanket term for different sorts of spirits. While some were like the genie in the lamp from Arabian Nights, others are a lot more vengeful and angry. I'm simply throwing out theories of djinn, a poltergeist... Whatever she was fighting was definitely not a poltergeist. Those don't materialize in front of you. Yeah, this thing was primarily in a form. Yeah, if it's all up in your face and you can see it, I don't think that's a poltergeist. They tend to uh, use indirect means, flinging objects and stuff like that. Like saw blades and power tools. Yeah. That was my end of the deal. Power tools, gas-operated generators. Oh, elevators. It threw an elevator at you? Um, it didn't throw an elevator at me, but it burned the cable on the elevator in my apartment building. My downstairs neighbor, she was in the elevator. She got injured. Um, she's probably here. I mean, if you guys want to see if you can find her and get information, that might be a good resource. Her name's Maureen. Maureen Green with an E at the end. Before we start chasing any of that, we kind of have to reconcile with the fact that we seem to have two different things on our hands. Uh, yes, that we do. Well, good news. The creature that I've been dealing with, it's been in the Murnau National Forest, and it hasn't seemed to come out just yet. I've been on this other thing's trail for a month, just trying to research it and figure out what it was. And that time frame, it's stayed in the forest. It seems to really only attack at night, at least once a week. And if you tangoed with it last night, then it sounds like we've got a week. My question is... How do we tackle the electric thing? If it's electrical energy, if we can get it stuck in a magnetic field, we could trap it. And where are we going to just find a magnetic field? We might be able to make one. All we would need is some industrial strength magnets, which I think that I saw at the hardware store when all that went down. So what, are we going to like lure it into a phone, then brick the phone? If we can lure this entity into something, get it stuck in our little magnet field we can more easily destroy it then. But the question mark still is, how do we destroy it? Who said we have to destroy it? If we have it trapped, we don't necessarily have to destroy it. Or at, le at least immediately. It crossed my mind, in case I had to run into the uh, substation. I had the idea to try and lure it to me and trap it in something like this. And they hold up the glass vial. In a glass vial? I mean, glass is an insulator, right? Yes, that it is. I mean, I'd imagine we're going to need something a bit bigger than this, but if we can get that magnetic field and then double up with something that is an insulator, something that'll keep it contained that it can't just jump out of, then I think we could have it contained theoretically forever, as long as no one else gets their hands on it. And then that gives us all the time in the world to figure out how to destroy it. Theoretically, yeah. You guys see Amber is just in the corner, smiling. But when the two of you look at her, she immediately just drops her expression. And she says, this could definitely work. I think that this is, this is a good idea. Jonas, yeah. do you think you're capable of doing this? I think it could work, yeah. Well, we're going to have to be really lucky. You know what they say about lightning in a bottle. I might have... Some, I can't guarantee how much, but I might have some protective gear for us in the event we have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with it. Keeper, may I roll on the armory, please? What are you looking for? Um, I am looking for rubber swamp trekking suits from the Loveland Frog package. <laughs> oh, wow, that's actually... Wow, well done. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, do that. Dude, Monster of the Month just sent you three, <laughs> three pairs of wellies. Uh, that'll be a nine. Amber nods her head, and she says... Where would these be at? Oh, um, my place. I subscribe to a Monster and a Month subscription service, and this month's was the Loveland Frogman. So they gave a bunch of swamp gear. You had coffee with that guy once. Oh yeah, didn't you say you had a coffee or a beer with him once? 
she laughs and she says, you know, I was only joking about that, right? Lewis's disappointment is palpable. And <laughs> she says, I can take a trip to Lewis's apartment, get those rubber suits. Stay in bed. Don't strain yourself. We're going to need everybody at their full strength here. Is there anything else I can get you from your house? Any books that, you know, might help us? Uh, yes, actually. Um, I have a little green journal, and he'll write a couple of book titles on there and hand her that. He goes, uh, they should all be on the same shelf. Uh, when you walk in on the left, you can't miss them. Right. We'll take a few days to prep. You said it was suppressed, right, Jonas? Yeah. It's weakened wherever it is, but it's not uh, down and out. We can take a couple days, optimistically a couple days, to get back on your feet, Lewis, to, for the rest of us, prep and get everything set up. Lewis, we're going to do some research. You figure out how and where we're going to do this trapping mechanism. And you see she conceals a smile and she says, let's do this thing. And she leaves the hospital room. Jonas files out about right after. Mm -hmm. Where are you headed? To the front desk. Hi, um, it's come to my attention that a family friend of mine is currently here. She had a bad accident. Um, can you tell me what room Maureen Green is in? Maureen Green, she is in 5C, so just a floor up. Cool. Jonas is going to head up to the fifth floor then. Jonas is going to like go hit the elevator button and then go, mm, and take the stairs. You get into... 5C. And you see that there's an older woman. She has gray hair. She has all these bandages and uh, she's got like a cast on her leg. And you see that she is in bed and she's resting. Is she conscious? It looks like she's dozed off. Jonas will sort of gingerly open the door, give it a knock. Knock, knock. On the other side of the room, some guy who's sitting up in bed watching one of the TVs pokes their head over. You don't look familiar. You're not here for me, are you? <laughs> no, no. Um, My uncle, uh, Lewis, lives in the same building as Miss Green here. He mentioned that she was hurt. I just wanted to check in, see if she was okay. I mean, friend of the family and all. Sure. Just wanted to make sure that you weren't some weird estranged cousin I didn't know about that was finally paying their condolences or whatever. <laughs> no, no, nothing like that. Um. I heard she took a spill in an elevator. How's she doing? Is she okay? He laughs a little bit and he says, yeah, I think we'll be fine. It's, we're buddies here. Her and I, two peas in a pod, kind of in the same boat, you know? Same thing happened to you then. Wow. Two. That's, huh. Yeah. Your uncle's friend's not much for conversation, really. This TV and this pudding has been my best friend. <laughs> I don't mean to impose, but... If you're comfortable with it, what could you tell me about what happened to you anyway? Roll to investigate a mystery. Oh, shit. I did it. I got a 12. With a 12, you get to ask two questions from our selected list. I guess for starters, what happened here? He says, well, you know, it was just a late night at the office. You know, I was just trying to get home and the elevator just snapped. And then I fell. I'm sorry to hear that. I mean, I, I'm glad to see that you're all right. I mean, elevator accidents are really, really nothing to scoff at. Yeah, well, I mean... <laughs> you fall down elevators all the time? It was just... It was... Nah, never mind. You won't believe me. And I suppose uh, this would be my next question. What is being concealed here? Go on. Try me. He smirks and he says, You're gonna laugh at me. You're gonna tell me the same thing. You know, everyone else keeps telling me that I was just seeing things. But I was at work late last night. And... I, I hear the microwave go off, and I'm looking around, no one's at the office, I'm wondering, you know, who turned on the microwave, and suddenly the lights, they get super bright, and I go to turn off my computer for the night, and then this electronic face just appears on it, and it starts laughing at me, and I'm scared shitless, so I grab all my stuff, I book it to the elevator, and I, I'm pressing the button as hard as I can, and, and then the lights just get so bright and then they explode glass got everywhere i have he like touches like some of the scars that are on his face and i got in the elevator i swear i heard it, it, it creaking and i thought i heard the laugh again and then i fell definitely a ghost 100 percent a ghost oh yeah gotta be you don't think i'm crazy i've heard crazier hell i've seen crazier hmm. i feel like uh crazy is a bit of a relative term here in balderston I don't think you're a uh, loopy or anything. Funny thing is, I actually have had a similar experience a while ago. Anyway, uh, I work at the the game store 
just uh just down the street actually doing my usual closing i mean you know making sure uh all the arcade cabinets are cleaned in order yada yada and i get to donkey kong and you've seen a donkey kong arcade cabinet i'd imagine i mean i i honestly thought you were too young to even know what donkey kong was that was my jazz when i was your age (laughs) are you serious yeah no it's like my favorite game of all time anyway uh it's at the the title screen and I mean, DK is just standing there, you know, doing DK things, looking like normal one second. Then I look back and it's just an angry emoticon face. The angry emoticon face. That's exactly what I saw. Yeah. yeah. And he like laughs at me. This like weird, evil 8-bit laugh. Yeah. It sounded like it was from like one of those old video games. Yeah. Yeah. And that ain't normal. I go to unplug the machine. Boom. Still there. Next thing I know, lights are turning back on and they start flaring up getting all nice and bright they start humming and i'm i'm getting antsy now so i book it out of the store just in time for every single bulb in that building to explode you know what kid thank you you're the only person i've told this story to that hasn't made me feel like a complete nutcase (laughs) yeah i suppose i could say the same well um i suppose i should uh back out let you get some rest i wouldn't imagine maureen will be waking up anytime soon so no no offense, but I don't really have much of a reason to stick around here. No, no, I, I get you, kid. Yeah. What was your name, by the way? Milton. Jonas. Nice to meet you, Milton. Well, take care of yourself. You steer clear of the ghosts. Oh, I will. Believe you me, I'm taking the stairs back down. Hey, I know we don't have any sort of connection, but if you see a nurse, could you could you have her send me another chocolate pudding cup? <laughs> you got it. And uh, Jonas will take their leave. Your phone buzzes. Your phone's blinking on and off, and you can see a text from Amber. It just says, meet me at the, and then it just is a bunch of keyboard smashes, and then your phone flicks off. Okay. Jonas doesn't know what, to, what the hell to do with that, so... Don't blame you. Anyway, time to get a pudding cup for my boy Milton. Hey, 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 let me get another uh, cup of choco for my boy Milton. I guess Jonas will return to Lewis's room. All right. Uh... Amber comes back and she pulls out Crate and she finds these very ill-fitting rubber suits. Like, they're skin-tight suits and they got these big galoshes. She looks at them confused for a second and she says, These are not flattering by any means. And I assume they're a one-size-fits-all and unfortunately there's only two, so... Jonas at least has to get in the thick of it, so he has to at least get one of them. And she tosses the books and the maps and everything to you. And sorry you had to carry all that up here yourself, Miss Arnetti. I got your message, but I couldn't really make out the tail end of it. Huh? My phone's still bricked. I. You, you just. Huh. I see. <laughs> I think I found our, uh, our ghost. And Jonas is going to pull out their phone. I got a message from you a minute ago. It said, Meet me at the. And it was, uh, kind of scuffed at the end of the message didn't really make any sense i take it that wasn't you nope i haven't been able to text on my phone since before yesterday yeah i mean when i saw it i was a little confused as to how you would have got my number but i mean you have your ways i guess but uh looks like this thing is uh trying to be something of a little trickster playing jokes on us funny this one has a sense of humor very very welcoming Knowing that now, let's just say, even if your phone starts working again, do not communicate via phone or any electronic device. Speak verbally face-to-face if we have to. Lewis hears in his head. I can do you one better. Oh, God, what the hell was that? Jonas, was that you? Hmm? Don't freak out. The thing is listening to us. Okay. I get the, the feeling you're trying to, like, beam your thoughts into my head. It doesn't really work that way. Just thinking I'm listening. I'm just going to think, good idea, this thing has a microphone. Whatever this thing is, it has it out for me. Can't tell you why. Yeah, I was about to ask why. I don't have that answer. Hey, do you think you can uh, do this to Amber for a sec? Yeah, Amber hears in her head. Don't freak out. Don't let on. The thing is listening to us. And Jonas is going to pat their back pocket. I feel as though... If we're all together, this is a better method of communication than uh, speaking. You know, prying eyes and ears and all that. You hear in the back of your head, Amber's voice. I agree. Jonas just kind of cocks an eyebrow. Huh. Interesting. 
via my thoughts you'll hear maybe we can use this to our advantage that's what i was thinking we feed it false information lure it into a false sense of security and then we hit it bingo with that amber puts her hand on your shoulder lewis and she says all right guys we'll take a couple days we'll figure this whole thing out then we'll kill this son of a bitch what do you say sounds a good plan to me well obviously next few days we're going to have to be doing some research so we'll see you then i'll see you too then and um, as we get ourselves together, I'm going to make another attempt at investigating the bitch. Okay. That's a 10, baby! You get to ask two questions. Considering I'm reading, what sort of creature is it, and what can hurt it? So you're reading up on some lore of, you know, creatures that can go in between devices and mechanical and even non-mechanical things and you see that there's not really a lot of lore you've said poltergeist but i think jonas has convinced you to you know rule that out and you do see a few things with the jinn but you see that not a lot of things match up which is funny because all the previous times that you've looked into your lore library you've been able to find something that you could piece together and you'd get an answer but this one you're looking somewhere and it just looks like everywhere you look is a dead end so it looks like this is something entirely new. For your second question, you turn away from the books. You kind of go into the clues that you have. I think you, you probably take that notebook that uh, you're using to give people your phone numbers. You kind of write down all your notes as to what you have here. You know what to do, and you come to the conclusion that your magnet tricks might just work. Well, I'll be damned. Every once in a while, a blind squirrel finds a nut. He begins going to work coming up with a name for it. Thursday comes and it's before the sun even rises and you wake up because you hear a very fast beeping next to you and then you hear like static. <laughs> you look to the source of the sound. You can see that angry smiling face on your heart monitor next to you and then you see sparks start to shower out of it. Oh lord. Um, I hobble out of the bed and I just try to put distance between me and the heart rate monitor. Un unplug everything that's on me, just keep moving. You just rip out the IVs and you just hobble out of the hospital? At the fastest pace I possibly can. All right. You just get out of your bed and you just run out of your room and are you leaving the hospital? Um, yeah, I'm just going to keep moving and I'm going to yell for nurses and doctors. Just try to start getting people out. You see a few doctors come up to you and they grab your arms and... They say, Mr. Green. You... There, there's, some, there's something wrong in my room. This, this, the, the heart monitor is going haywire. Don't worry, Mr. Green. Everything's okay. We'll make sure that everything's working for you. Just come with us. Are you feeling any... I, I'm, I'm feeling mountains better. Okay. One of the doctors puts his back of his hand on your forehead, and he says, Okay. We, I mean, we recommend you stay one more day, but... Um, I'd like to leave AMA. Yeah, yeah, we could do that for you. And you see that they leave to get some paperwork. And he's going to start um, walking to the front office, or I think the front desk. Uh, so you run down the stairs. As you do, you can hear the lights above you buzzing as they flicker every single time you move underneath one. Then when no one's around and they're all getting the paperwork, I am going to try to mutter an incantation, and I just want to try to slow it or like weaken it to buy me and people time to get out. Okay, roll plus weird. Uh, that'll be an eight. An eight. So it works imperfectly. Pick your effect and glitch. Uh, my effect will be trapping a monster, and I want to try to trap it in that specific light. And my glitch will be it is of short duration. You say your incantation, and then you just see the light stops blinking for a second. I will go to one of the like doctors or nurses or whoever's there, and I am going to ask them to say, uh, hey, um, I think something's going on it's kind of like how the power went weird the other day probably shut off the elevators i heard someone else had some weird electrical problems with elevators in town the doctors kind of nod and they're like all right all right mr green you have your insurance card uh yeah they've been uh, loving me lately she runs your information and her eyes widen and she's like she's oh man you weren't lying as she hands it back to you you hear just this just glass shattering all over the place and just a shower of sparks flying all over the place in your room. She turns her head and she's like, oh, jeez. 
I'm just going to grab her and anyone else that's in arm's reach and just try to get them away from it. So the nurse gives you back your information. This whole thing happens. You grab her shoulders and you try to you bring her with you. She kind of bats you away and she's like, what? Get your hands off him. What are you doing? Do you not see the sparks flying everywhere? You look back at your room and the sparks have stopped and you see the light above you getting brighter and brighter and you hear the buzzing just getting louder. Like, do you not hear that? Like, the buzzing getting louder, the light getting brighter. I would get out from under that. Pardon me if I seem a little paranoid, but electricity and I haven't gotten along recently. She looks at you a little bit concerned, and she says, You know, Mr. Green, maybe we should keep you another day. Um, if I leave AMA, there's nothing you can do about it. Are you sure you're feeling okay, Mr. Green? Yes, I am a thousand percent feeling fine. It's just things have been acting weird electronically all day in town for me. Heaven knows what's going to happen next. Right. Mr. Green, electrical failures happen all the time. I mean, we experience them. It's it's just a random coincidence. Maybe you're right. Um, yeah, I'll just I'll sign the papers and I'll be out of your guys' hair. The nurse takes it from you and she's like, "All right, Mr. Green, if anything, if there's anything you need, please, please don't hesitate to come back." As I'm walking out, I want to take note to what it tethers to if it does anything different. So you get to the hospital's lobby and you go to walk out the door. The door does not open. Hey, um, is the door broken? You see a security guard gets up, he's like, No, it just opened before. Um, I try to, like, walk up and, like, wave it again, it doesn't open. It does not. Um, uh, it's not working now. So you see that this security guard, he gets up, you see that he picks up his walkie, and he goes to mutter something into it, and as he does, the front doors slide open, and he just goes, Oh, that's weird. Uh, yeah, quite weird. Well, anyways, I'm gonna get going. Uh, thanks for the help on that, I guess. That was weird. And I will begin to walk through the door. You walk out, and you see the doors slam shut with great force. Shit! The security guard looks at it, super puzzled. You see that the walkie he's holding in his hand just explodes. 